What have you been doing in the uh, quote unquote off season? Try to wait till five o'clock to have a drink. What the heck is going on out here? March 20th, 2020 was historical because COVID-19 shut down the PGA Tour. June 2020 is historical because the PGA Tour returns. But golf never left. Smaller, mini tour events like those on the Outlaw Tour, Cactus Tour, and the Scottsdale Open have found new names for themselves inside the COVID-19 pandemic. With hungry gambling degenerates needing something to play and PGA Tour players needing a place to play, the market always finds a way to deliver. It's not often you can sneak out to Arizona's Talking Stick Golf Course in May and see the likes of Joel Damon, Colt Nose, Nate Lashley, Streels. Fancy seeing you out here at Talking Stick in May. All right. What are you doing out here? Well, obviously with our quarantine, our change of uh, spring plans. What quarantine? Um, oh, oh, yep. yep. Um, the Dig Scottsdale it. Open here at Talking Stick has popped up on the on the radar. I'm buddies with Ryan Prey. He used to run the Gateway Tour back yeah. 16, 17 years ago. I used to play on that. We started this event uh, four years ago to just help some aspiring players who were looking, you know, to try and make their way onto the PGA Tour. And we're paying out a guaranteed purse of $130,000, $20,000 going to first place. This year, um, you know, I got a call from, from Streelman and then Kirk Triplett called me and then Joel Dahman called me and they're like, hey, you know, we're starting up in about a month and it's a couple weeks after the Scottsdale AZ Open. Are you allowing tour guys to play? And I said, well, absolutely. I go, the other players that are playing in the tournament, you know, are aspiring PGA Tour professionals. So, you know, they're getting a great opportunity to be able to play against some of the best in the world. So is this kind of about getting some competition under your belt? It is. I look at it like if if this preparation saves me one shot at Colonial, like maybe the first tee shower I'm a little nervous and hit a bad one, but now I step up and pipe one, like cool that, that could all be worth it. Having this tournament, so it's something you come out and play in, you know, get some competitive rounds in, and you know, rather than practicing or just going out and hitting balls around, it's been nice to come out and play. Well, I guess if anything, this is a little practice for playing golf with no fans. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty much what our first four events will be like. Ironically, even though fans weren't allowed to attend this year's event, it had more eyeballs than ever before. With a lack of sports to wager on around the world, Vegas opened lines on the Scottsdale Open. A lot of buddies were calling me this week wondering, uh, you know, who I thought my favorites were. So I kind of stayed hush-hush on that. I didn't know if I could get any trouble or anything. What's it been like kind of being the guy walking around here with the big it is really weird. Guys. It is weird. Uh, I'm not normally that guy. I don't still have the big <laughs> but uh, it's weird. You know, it's a betting favorite coming in. I've never been in that position, obviously. 6-1 going in. Yeah, right? which I said it was way too high. I mean, I, if Streelman's 12-1, to 1, I probably should have been around that mark a little bit. So I saw some sports books uh, play sods on this tournament, and they put me at 100-1 to 1 to win, which I was... Uh, Felt a little slap in the face, to be honest. I know I haven't played my best golf over the last couple of years, but I've still competed at a high level. And uh, my buddy sent it to me one day, and I was kind of scrolling down. I kept scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I'm like, Jesus, where the hell am I? Uh, and then I get a, get there at 100 to 1. I just laughed. I'm like, if you guys don't bet this, y'all are crazy. Yeah, I right. mean, I might not win, but I, at 100 to 1, I, I think it's worth the There's risk. There's value there. Oh, big value. You have any uh, degenerate buddies back home putting some money on you this week? I don't know, they don't tell me, but I definitely have a lot of degenerate buddies, that's for sure, <laughs> yeah. While gambling on a mini tour event might not be the safest bet, safety for the players was top of mind. Single rider carts, hand sanitizer everywhere, and the best part, individual rakes. What's it like rolling around with your own rake? It's weird. Rolling around with your own rake, what's that like? You walk up to the bunkers, you forget about it, you gotta go back to the car, get the rake. Then you forget the rake again, you gotta go back and get it on the next hole. <laughs> what's it like rolling around with your own rake? Uh, we, we named them all. Uh, we had Richard the rake out there, we had Steve, was pretty common. Um, I named mine George today. I, I had to use him once today, actually. It was the only time I had to use him, but he's been a nice companion in the golf cart. Let's talk about the only time you had to use it today, hole six. Yes. An amazing up and down. Man, I feel so ESPN right now. You're doing uh, great. Hole six. Yeah, I actually hit, it was a, it was, it, it's holes, it's one of the harder part threes out here, but I, the greens are firm, so you have to play the front edge, but I hit a great shot and I looked up and it was going at the bunker, so I must've aimed wrong there, but, uh, it was kind of, it was a slippery up and down. I had a good shot to about eight feet and then made the putt. So that was, that was a big save because I was playing well. I didn't want to make a bogey in the middle of the round to, yeah. to kind of ruin things coming in. Well, you can see hole six from right here by the clubhouse at Talking Stick. And uh, me and my other two guys on crew were sweating that up and down because, sir, 
we did bet on you yeah. today, <laughs> um, but we don't know because they're not doing live score, but every nine holes. Right. So tell us right now, did we win? We took you to beat your two playing partners in today's round. What'd you shoot? What'd they shoot? I had a 63 today. Nate struggled to a 71 and Mason, Nick Mason shot 67 or 68. So I nipped him by four or five at least. Ah, that's a W for the Breaking Park crew. That is a W and it's probably worth a beer, isn't it? Yeah, that's worth a beer. I that's like worth that. A beer. Thanks for giving us some golf action here in the middle of this pandemic. Thanks for giving us the time for the interview and um, Absolutely. kick ass the rest of the season. Yeah, right? yeah thank you. Appreciate it, guys. All right, buddy.